Hey everyone, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Della Wheel, and this is episode 599. Yeah, just really wanted to thank everybody who's been supporting me. Thank y'all for the love. Thank y'all for subscribing to the channel. But yeah, before I forget, shout out to my homeboy Harvey Davis for this hoodie. It arrived today. And make sure y'all go shop with them. So tonight I got a special guest by the name of Miss Neek. She's back for the third time, y'all. Make sure that y'all give her nothing but good hospitality on this platform. And just sit back and enjoy. And just waiting for her to get up in here. Uh, okay, where you at, girl? Yeah, she wanted to come back on the show so we can do what we do best. <laughs> Got a special... Great show for y'all tonight. So, I'm gonna turn up in here. Okay, there you Hi. go. I can hey. hear you. I can never hear you. Oh, that ain't mine. Over, I can hear you. You, you can hear me? I can hear you, but it's low. Hold up. Got me over here looking crazy on my show. What's wrong with you? Okay, how about now? No, it's the same. My volume up, though. Yeah, it's probably your re reception, because I'm not talking loud or talking too low. I'm talking right, normal. It's fine. I mean, I can hear you enough to talk shit, so. <laughs> good, good. So what brings you on the show tonight? Um, I just think me and you got a lot to discuss. We ain't been, we ain't been on here in a while, so. Yeah, I know. I, I know, ain't going to be arguing with you on these posts. I don't <laughs> understand what I'll be doing except expressing myself and speaking from mine, so I don't understand. Right. I don't understand that because I realize everybody isn't going to agree. They ain't supposed to agree with me, but respect my opinion like you respect everybody else's opinion. Right. But and we do. I think we've always had that. I mean, I was just joking about arguing. You know how we do. But um. No, not you. I was just speaking in general. Debate. Yeah, I was just speaking in general. But it just comes to black people. They just feel like, oh, because, um you don't agree with me or I can't convince you that I'm right. Let me disrespect you. Let me put uh, out yeah. See, I don't like that. all this yeah, other we, shit. We never, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you ugly, you broke, you this, you that. You know what I'm saying? We have. That's because they don't have no debating skills. So they have to insult you. Oh, they can. You know? They can, but you know what I'm saying? It, it's totally irrelevant because I'm greater than them. I'm greater than anybody that's ignorant, like, because I know who I am. Right. And my results proved it, you know what I'm saying? Because every day I'm in my purpose. Every day I'm doing something productive. I'm not right. out here wasting my years and wasting my youth on bullshit and distractions like most of the masses is. Because if anything, I'm out here helping my people, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and it's just because they got the same skin colors you doesn't make them your people oh yeah i definitely know that and i do like i've always told you i do learn a lot since you have started your show you know because i didn't know a lot of these black history facts that you be telling me will be posting even though you killed the little harriet tubman like <laughs> <laughs> like i was watching that movie and i'm like oh my god i love her and then you, i was like don't ruin it okay and you was just like she don't exist what <laughs> it's a cool like i it was it's was, it was a cool story though but yeah that's exactly what it I'm is i'm devastated it's a, it's a story 
and a lot of stories wasn't relevant. It wasn't true. Right. Because they create these allegories to fool us to think. Were that, you the one that posted something about good morning? Like, you know, they have like good morning back in slavery. It was like after they didn't like lynch your family member or something, they'll say, oh, did you have a good morning? Like mourning the death. Did you post that? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because, like, it's so much stuff, like, that we have turned around, you know, like the N-word, of course, like, you know, it's always online, like, I got dreads, but people would be like, don't say that, your hair isn't dreadful. Yeah, it's not, but I like the word, you know? So, are people going to stop saying good morning now, since that, ha- since that has come out? I don't know, because our people lack, you know, knowledge within self a lot of us not all of us but it's a huge portion of us don't know who we are what significance that we play in civilization and it's just sad because people will argue me down but i gave y'all free game and i even get paid for it all the time because niggas want a fee to help somebody I don't, oh yeah of course for everything I, I don't charge to help my people. Now, I charge for my time because I showed up and people stood me up. So I'm charging for my time, but I will not charge for my wisdom or my help. You know what I'm saying? And sorry, that comment distracted me. Yeah, 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 Bria, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Shout out to her. That's my whole girl. But yeah, it's just we lost sight of unity and stuff. And I just think that when you do something alone, you're gonna be misunderstood because you ain't you ain't got the whole city behind you or you ain't got but a whole city. That's pushing. how all the greats we learned about started though. Everybody was alone. <laughs> yeah. And then people later on tried to ride their wave once they started making a little progress. So Yeah, they don't get it until you did. That's when they gonna get it. But when you're alive, they hate you. Like, mm-hmm. oh man, you causing trouble. You need to hush. You need to be cautious about what you say. No, because I'm gonna talk my shit. I'm gonna use my voice before it become illegal. Cause it's gonna become illegal for us to express ourselves like we do on all these apps and social media outlets. Like they working on eliminating freedom of speech and eliminating authenticity. Like, how is that going to work with so many podcasts? Are they going to, like, ban those, too? Because... No, they're going to they gonna conform. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's all about changing who you are. It's about getting rid of your essence. And yesterday, when I posted that Eve picture, people was all like, oh, I'm happy that she changed her Cause she had got surgery. You know Everybody what I'm has the same face. Like, do they only have one like look? Everybody looks the same. Like, yeah. have you seen? Like, I did see Eve. Like, of course she's she's beautiful, but like they changed the face. They put a pound of makeup on. Wasn't nothing wrong with Eve. Eve was always beautiful. But like, have you seen Nene leaks lately? They look alike. Yeah. Everybody fucking looks alike. Yeah, my bad. One moment. Yes, they have. They have banned freedom of speech because it's called shadow banning. They will shadow ban you. They will mm-hmm. move your posts. I'm, I'm responding to the comment. That's moment. what that is? Yeah. They okay, will... I thought it was just like, I don't. I never even like looked into it because I used to see people post like, oh, my page been shadow banned. I'm like, what the fuck is that, you know? <laughs> it's the silence. It's the silence you. It's to put you in solitary confinement socially on okay. social media. But you go into the hold and you go think about what you did so you could come back ignorant and you could come back a slave. Right. And that's what so they that want us still, to do. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. But yeah, they working on that. You know what I'm saying? And when I tell people about this type of stuff, they think we're free. They think that we're not fighting uh, injustice, but we are because mm-hmm. they want us to forget about everything that happened. That's why they subsidizing the history. They want to create and rewrite it 
into thinking that, oh, we didn't go through it as much or yes, we didn't have it so horrifying. bad. Like who said they was gonna start teaching that slavery uh helped us or like got us further along? Well, who slavery helped other than the oppressors? It ain't help us. No. Cause we because we continue to stay like that, even though we're not on the plantations, like we're not actually sharecropping, we're actually not planting stuff. They just moved it. They moved it with these corporations, these conglomerates, these companies. They moved it. Mm -hmm. So so we actually still own. Oh the yeah, we definitely still are. But it's just a whole lot of people don't know that they're slaves. And that's how you become a slave when you don't know you're a slave. When you when you think, for example, when you work at the post office, you know, you just sorting letters and this and that, or you at McDonald's, you know, saying making the fries and putting salt on them. It's the same thing with yeah. like you picking cotton and this and that. It's the same thing. But that's how I feel when I go to work. I work at a plant, plantation. <laughs> so, but yeah. what, what, what are we gonna do? Yeah, it's just uh, well, what we can do is create our own jobs. Do I can't see it in my background. Cause my background white, so the comments are kind of. Well, I'm not saying to be lazy. You know what I'm saying? Cause right. Cause we ain't, we don't come from lazy people. Like we build civilizations, we build pyramids and stuff. We and build... I hate that we have that like reputation of being lazy though. Cause like we never were. No, we never was. It never will be. Nothing was ever handed, you know? So I just, yeah, I just, just hate that. <laughs> yeah, and I and I just hate that, you know, people go with that narrative and then try to put all of us in the category because I'm not lazy one bit. Like, yeah. I utilize my 24 hours, but people just think that, you know, you're supposed to just work and die. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's all about producing. It's all about being productive. It's all about being disciplined. Because I believe in work ethic. Because work ethic take you to newer levels oh, yeah. within life and give you the sense of self-reliance and just making sure that it brings confidence. It brings character within yourself. Because you got to have some depth into you. You can't be lame. You can't be average you know what i'm saying right. and i don't like to be around people that's average because so many people like in our age group and younger so entitled even older people too you know there's no age limit on entitlement but mm -hmm. people just think that oh i'm owed something no nobody owes you nothing right but you have to be ordered to live because so many people die for you so you got to make sure that you live. You got to make sure that their sacrifice didn't go unpunished. Right. And I don't know if you've been into the, like the current events, like as far as news, but you see that bitch that tried to burn down Dr. King's house? <sighs> yes. I so that was crazy. Like why? Like what was the point? And like when I read the headline, I was like, I hope she ain't black. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you serious? Yeah. Like, are like, you serious? I wasn't surprised. Why I not? Was, I was. I was like, who would do who would do that? Because it was black people that always killed other black people. That is true. And it was black people that set them up because whoever shot them that, that's one thing but who placed them at the scene of the crime or the the murder investigation scene that's right. a different story and it looked like you and i people that look just like you and me that orchestrated it so it didn't it don't surprise me when i see shit like that but what surprises yeah. me when people... I mean, I guess I'm surprised because I kind of... Well, I understand, like, they were killing people, like, you know, like, during that, during his time. Like, you know, like, if we have somebody, like, you know, he, of course, they'll have haters and they'll kill them. But, like, not anybody, like, history-wise, you know? Like, who... I've never heard of anybody defaming, like, our history. 
You know? Say, we, yeah, I mean, we do it every day. Everything's a joke now. Yeah, but to, I mean, I, I I get jokes, but to actually go and try to like burn down the house, why? Like that is in, that's like going to his gravesite or something and like defaming his like headstone, you know? Like that's that's crazy to me. Now, jokes. I know this generation takes nothing serious. Everything is on the internet. Like we have seen murders on the internet. Like it's just all type of stuff. Like nothing is serious now. We are so desensitized. So I get that part of it, but it's just to like really go to this house and try to burn it down. Like what? What were you getting out of that? Attention. The wrong. Like what kind of attention do you want from? Like are you like? <sighs> Listen, <laughs> well, listen though. Attention will make anybody do anything. I don't it. want that kind of attention. I mean, like that's it's not good though. People are not gonna like you. That's the problem, you know. It's just we so we so used to the ordinary, but we never expect the unexpected. Right. And you always got to respect, expect the unexpected, especially nowadays, because nowadays there's no holds barred. It's just so much stuff going on in the world. Like, I had a, a conversation not too long ago about, like, okay, like, you know how you used to could say something and then you'll see the ad on, like, your phone or whatever. But now you could think something and it's on your phone. Like, I was just thinking about that damn. I think we're in a simulation. I think somebody's pulling strings. I think it's a whole bunch of like screens somewhere and people are like making us think things. Like with the whole Shazam and Kazam shit, you know, how can so many people get it wrong? Somebody, is... <laughs> who the hell is doing this to us? <laughs> and crazy. Like we've been deprogrammed, like reset, all type of stuff. You ever was like in a conversation and like you just like pause and it's like, damn, what the fuck was I just talking about? Or what was I about to say? Like, I think that they are like re fucking setting you, taking your batteries out or something because you're getting too knowledgeable about something. You know, I know you probably had the moments because you know a lot of stuff like you do a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we get that in, um, rewind? Because motherfuckers be thinking I'm stupid. Like I don't read and shit. I'm like, I read. Way more than y'all read. Like y'all need to read when it's convenient. Y'all don't read to enrich yourself or enhance yourself. Y'all just read whenever it's convenient for y'all. But yeah. it just be hilarious to me because they showed us and predicted all of this <laughs> shit. Milton, get your thirsty ass off my live. This is my show. <laughs> <laughs> Cause we, 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 we serious over here. No, uh, but. <laughs> No, but they told us all these things and showed us in movies. And even the Terminator, if you go back and watch the Terminator in 1985. You know, I've never seen any of those movies ever. But they told us what was to come. Mm -hmm. And we're in the Terminator years. Okay, you have to explain it to me because I've never seen the movie. Was he a robot? Yeah, he, well, he, well, he was an android, basically. Oh, okay. And, well, in his time, they keep, was killing humans and enslaving them and this and that. So he oh, goes, wow. so if there is someone by the name of, um, I don't know, the white lady name or, well, John Connor. Yeah, John Connor. He's like the savior in the movie, well, the protagonist mm -hmm. in the movie. So he goes back in time to to warn his mother and stuff before because the terminator actually trying to prevent his birth because he saves the robots in the future my house gonna get real loud let me go in my room <laughs> <laughs> kids the male yes. kids are y'all yeah. coming in or no <laughs> okay well never mind get him, get him! <laughs> yeah, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry. Oh, Get his, yeah. Oh, yeah.
So ghetto. I'm sorry. Oh. All right. No, you good. I can take a brief intermission. <laughs> yeah, that, that. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you good. No, but what I was saying is that they put these images and signs and the they're playing in movies, but we bypassed them because it's it was fantasy. Right. But. It was actual prediction. It was actual prophecy. And we just act surprised now, but we've been watching TV shows like the Jetsons and Transformers and stuff like yeah. that. Like that wasn't no, just no random ass idea. That was, the right. agen- that was an agenda. I've always felt that they had to get the idea from somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but now it's just like, ugh. I don't, like not believe like you know how sometimes you'll be like oh when i don't believe that. i don't think that happened in real life it definitely fucking could now like everything yeah they got robot police dogs out in the streets well they that's, they, that's kind of scary that's well, scary than a real well they proto they prototypes they got them prototypes in the streets right now so i just be telling everybody like why y'all bullshitting we need to be prepared we need to make sure that we ready for war because we fight in the wrong war. We fight in each other. Each other. Mm-hmm. And whether if you dis- disagree or don't see me as the perception that you have as a black male or a so-called black male, I'm nothing like a statistic. You know, the ones that everybody celebrate and support when they go to jail and to shoot and kill them. each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when a nigga actually have some type of common sense, oh, he's a hater or he a buzzkill or he a party yeah. pooper. Like, get, get get your ass away from here. You know, you ruining my high or you killing my buzz and this and that. I'm like, that's all y'all want to do? Right. And you know honestly, I, mean? <laughs> I, I, uh, it's, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I have cut out drinking. I'm sober today. Me too. <laughs> you Me know, too. normally I have my little wine glass when I'm doing this podcast with you. But yeah, because I I just want to focus on something else, you know? Like, I think I can get so much further in life if I'm, like, sober. You know, instead of spending my weekends, like, drinking. You know, I could be learning how to do, like, something more productive. Like, you know, I don't know how to cook. I could be, like... Learning how to cook on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you won't know how to cook. I I do not. I mean, I could probably follow a recipe. Don't look at me like that. I could probably follow a recipe, but like, just to get in there and like cook, like no. Like I have limited cooking skills. I ain't gonna say I just can't cook anything, but it's just not. I I I don't. And my <laughs> excuse have always been I work so much, and I do work a lot, but. Um, like Saturday, you know, which is my only day off, like I'll chill and I'll, you know, give me a little sip, sip. But now I can still chill, get some rest and then like maybe cook one meal, you know, so I can learn. Well, I could have taught you if I would have known that because I've been cooking <laughs> since I was 15. What's your so best I, dish? My best dish? Sure, I made it this morning. Actually, what was I it? it? I hooked it up. I had made some grits. I had made some. Oh, I love um, grits. I had made some grits. I made some um, bacon, some sausage. What they mean? Body looking like that, and I can't cook. Did he just call me fat? No, he didn't say. He didn't say you fat. Like, don't jump oh. to no conclusions and stuff. <laughs> he, he <laughs> I too, mean, I eat good. Hell. No, but I'm saying like, I pretty much can cook anything. You know, I made meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and gravy and from scratch and everything like that. So I know how to cook, you know what I'm saying? Like it just I don't get the opportunity because it's like people want to actually go out to a fine dining restaurant and stuff like that. So I don't really get the opportunity to showcase. I mean, that's to cool, but I mean, like a man cooking for you, I like my man to cook for me. <laughs> so yeah, I come over and you can cook me something. Yes, that's fine. Like I mean, fine dining is cool too, but a lot of it. 
is overrated. Some of it is just for the ambiance, you know, like it's like really cute places, especially down here. Like we have a lot of like cute little upscale places, but the food don't really be hidden like that. It's no. just cute for photo ops. Yeah, you don't know who made it. So I suggest if you do go to a restaurant, I go to somebody who, who's like my color, you know, somebody who will understand like flavor and saturation and this and that. You know, actually put some love into it, cause right. I can. When I cook, I cook like I'm about to eat it. You know, since some meals don't be successful, but uh, hey, I'm human. You know, what I'm saying like, you know, deal with me or deal with the AI robots that's coming, who's gonna vaporize you if you dislike your food. <laughs> because you know honestly, the food is killing us anyway. Like that's another reason why I kind of want to learn how to cook. Everything got all these hidden ingredients in it. They are trying to kill us. Yeah. And I just advise everybody to just really do their research on what they mm -hmm. buy and what they eat because it's not what you eat, is who's manufacturing it, who owns these type of um, companies and stuff like right. that. Because cause everybody just think that, oh, this comes from a grocery store. Motherfucker, are you kidding me? Like, these grocery stores, it's just storage of food like you don't know where that hamburger meat or that vegetable that fruit came from right you know what i'm saying they just a storage unit you know what i'm saying so we have to really be careful and know because you know we were vegetarians you know what i'm saying and our only meat was buffalo back in the day and that's mm -hmm. why they slaughtered majority of the buffalo because that was our food supply right and we just have to know this so we won't repeat the same mistakes and stuff like that. Cause I really been working on just, you know what I'm saying? Getting big, getting toned up and stuff like that. And, you know what I'm saying? I recognize I picked up weight, you know what I'm saying? But hey, that's, it's my body. Like, I if mean, I wanna... it happens, hell, yeah. so do I. So. See, I be, I be eating, so I don't <laughs> care, you know? Shit, I ain't one of those niggas like, man, I only got, some baking soda in the refrigerator, man. I'm struggling, man. I know the struggle. Nigga, fuck that. Nigga, I'm yeah. eating, nigga. Like, it's just everybody want to look good instead of feel good and be good. You know, everybody want to lick it. But, you know like, if saying? you feel good, I mean, you'll look good, too. If you take care of your body, it's going to take care of you. So, you know. Oh, yeah. But it's just, to me, I just feel like you put in all these hours in the gym and this and that. But you're not putting your mind into no book or you're not actually educating yourself on something new. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I just think that it's such a travesty that everybody's so quick on health, health is wealth and all this other shit. That's because it's mental. a trend. It's like, yeah. you know how it is. Like, as soon as like, whatever you're talking about, like black history and all of that, you know, like trying to pump people up, as soon as that become a trend, then people are going to be like, oh yeah, you know, basically talking like how you're talking you know so that's <sighs> nobody was really worried about working out and health is wealth and all of this until it became a thing now everybody's doing it you know just like with the surgeries a lot of people are taking like their shit out so what about all the girls that didn't already got theirs you know because the trend is changing everybody's slimming down <laughs> like to me I never really cared about looks. I always cared about how you treated me. Cause yeah. Because this, this is really hard to find a woman, a man that just will love you unconditionally. Because nowadays, everything comes at a price. Everything is all about, oh, what can you do for me? What, what they can you can offer? get about you. Yeah. And you just don't know who's real. Because everybody won't real, but they're not real with them damn selves. So right. how about you be real first? You know what I'm saying? You grab, or how about, you, like, y'all just both go into it genuine and just, like, see how it go. Like, why is it always got to be, like, I don't know. That's no, why I am still single. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, it it's, it's really weird out here. Like, I, you can't really trust people. Some people talk a really good game. And then... You know, two, three months down the line, it's like, who are you? They're an imposter. Because, uh, you know what's crazy is that 
you could be sleeping in the bed with somebody and then from breakfast, y'all good. From lunch, that y'all good. And then when it comes dinner time, they become the fucking devil. They become oh, the yeah. fucking enemy, the op. And you just like, damn, what the fuck happened? Like, what the fuck I do? <laughs> you know, you gonna be confused like that. Like, what happened? Like, what I do? But it just people be sleeping with the enemy and they don't even know it. You know, mm-hmm. and that's the most hurtful thing because it's like everybody be begging for companionship but it just because honestly it really shouldn't be this hard it should not be this hard it's not hard it's not hard like it's too many rules it's too many like it's just too much and it's mostly in the black community Mm -hmm. yeah it is funny because it's like it's like this um it's not hard when you have good intentions right and then somebody who really wants you, they won't have all these motherfucking tasks. They won't have all these motherfucking requirements that you got to meet to get their attention or just right. to get their respect, man. Fuck all that. Like, I ain't supposed to be slaying no fucking dragon. Is this a game show? What, am I on, like, what, what, what them shows used to be called? Flavor of Love? <laughs> am I on no. a show? Like, what the fuck? No, but that's what I'm saying is it became an auction. It's an auction. And that's letting me know that we were selling each other. Because a lot of people don't know this. Like, we were selling each other during slavery, too. Because everybody who was so-called black, they weren't slaves. You know what I'm saying? Free free people. Free men. Look it up, people. Free men. Find out what the fuck that means. But they were selling us. And that's why it was called Black Friday and stuff like that. Shut the fuck yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So what I mean by that is it's just everybody wants a name. Everybody wants just a validation, but they don't want to put in the work because it's work. Everything that you have and everything, you know, life is work. You know, it's I bet it's work to be Neek Reeves. You know what I'm saying? It's work to be Dollar Wheel. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's hard work to maintain. Yeah. And stuff like that. It's it's work it's work to get old. You know what I'm saying? Shit, it's it's hard work to even get to your next birthday. To make it another year. It definitely and, is. And people don't really sit back and think about these type of things because everybody living for the moment, everybody wanna turn up, everybody wanna have a good time. But when you really realize how much time you're wasting just by trying to please people who gonna forget about you when you die. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers gonna move on with the rest of their life. And then you dead. You gone. That's right. It. And they still doing the same <laughs> shit. Partying, turning up. I've seen it happen many times. We yeah. see it happen many times. Cause especially in our community, people play with death like that's something to play with. Like mm-hmm. that, that shit ain't nothing to play that's with. That's like, the hell. Ain't no coming back. Like, when I tell motherfuckers, like, oh, man, you changed and this and that, like, you ain't see your mother bury her son. You ain't see that. I did. Right. That shit would change anybody. I don't give a fuck how tough you are. You know what I'm saying? That shit hurts, especially when you feel like something just comes out your body, like your soul and shit. And people just expect you to adapt to that type of shit. Like, you're supposed to go back to normal. But shit, yeah. what is normal? Like, you can't you know? tell anybody how to handle those situations. Even if it's somebody that has been through it and they're like, oh, you just have to do this. Like, you got to get over it. You got to, like, just live. Like, you can't tell anybody else how to grieve, you know? So, even if somebody did go through what you went through, they still can't tell you how to act. No. And, and, and that's just... what get on my nerves because, like, I literally had somebody tell me like a couple weeks after my mom passed, they were like, why are you looking so sad? And I'm like, don't you know what happened to me? And they're like, yeah, but you just got to get over that. The fuck? (laughs) Man. (laughs) And I just hate that. Just how we sugarcoat shit. Like not saying that you are, but I'm just saying just in general, just we sugarcoat things. Like when people was asking me what was wrong with me, I'm like, shit, I'm fucked up. I'm angry. You know what I'm saying? 
which we have a right to be angry. Yeah, you, you have a right saying? to be angry. Because if I made a guy image, then shoot, God made us angry. You know, he gave us all his emotions because God was angry. Because yeah. people make God seem like he was just so um, passive and so <laughs> like he was just like cool, calm, and collective. Unbothered. But, <laughs> yes. Yes. But he destroyed cities. He killed people. He yeah. killed anything and wiped out whatever yeah. just to get his point across because people right. were being disobedient. That but is what true. I'm, but what I'm trying to say is it's just that, you know, we need to stop forgiving everybody because you can't forgive everybody. And no. everybody, like, Hell everybody, no. everybody, we all talking about, well, if you don't forgive, then God won't forgive you. i like, well. You can forgive them and, and just not fuck with them no more. But what I'm saying is that we always told to forgive, but they never forgive us. Yeah. So even the the white dad on Ron Goldman's father, that motherfucker never forgave OJ for killing <laughs> his son. He he said, I hate him and I wish he would have got the death penalty. Thirty some years later. But we, uh, but, but, but we supposed to forgive. But my right. thing is, is that you have to think of the people that hurt you, like how old they were. Because everybody know right from wrong by now. Yes. But they made a yes. choice. But they made a choice to hurt you. They made a choice to And that's why I'm a firm believer. Like when my feelings are hurt by somebody and like they make no effort to apologize or anything. Once they see I'm hurt, they keep going. I will not fuck with you anymore. I don't care relationship, friendship, because you are well aware of what you're doing. Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes people will try to come back and they'll just act like ain't nothing happened or whatever. Mm -hmm. Hell no. Nah, no. I'm not fucking with you. I don't give a damn. Yeah. And the, and the most dangerous person on the planet it's a person who don't take accountability. Yeah. That's the most dangerous person. Or a person who don't have nothing to lose. Because they see you shining. They see you getting the good publicity. They see you getting praise and this and that. They jealous. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They want your spot. But some people don't know how to do like what you're doing. So of course, like you go have like a lot of haters. People are gonna be trying to throw salt because they wanna do it, but they don't know how. I didn't know how to or do it. Or they don't either. have the voice or they don't have the knowledge or know how to find you know. <laughs> no, uh, it's it's funny because I didn't know how to do it either. But I worked. But you figured it out. Yeah. You know, some people that like going back to being lazy. Yeah. You know, you, the information is out there. <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> it, it you know, it, it's so funny because I didn't talk as much like that in school. So when I decided to do this podcast, as people from elementary school and middle school stumble upon my show and they like, where all this came from? You talk now and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, you're a grown ass man. Yeah, you talking. Yeah, but what I'm saying <laughs> is that I had to step out of my comfort zone. I had to step out yeah. of the identity that they gave me and create one for myself. Right. But that come with, you know, growing up and like, you know, like you said, figuring out who you are. Because I mean, like in high school, yeah, people did conform to labels, you know, like that's not something you have to live with because at the high school, hell, that shit's over. Then your life began, you know? So you're a whole different nigga. You're not who you was in high school. <laughs> yeah. And some people is still in prison in high school. Oh, mentally. yeah. Oh, yeah, and, I definitely, yeah. And I just and feel like... that's sad because, especially, like, people in our age group, hell, I got a 20-year-old daughter. You think I'm still going to be, like, talking about some shit from high school? I mean, let's, like... Me and my friends are, like, reminiscing and, like, laughing about something. But, like, people really, like, they really hold that weight. Like, oh, I was this. And, you know, like, you ain't even that person no more. No, because everyone declines. That's part of evolution. Every Everybody, you know what I'm saying, deteriorate. Yeah. You know? So while you at your best, 
you know, go live it up, you know, go do what you got to do. But it just, we get so caught up in thinking that we have time to make things right, or we have time to follow our dreams, or we have time to become a success. Really, you don't. Because if you don't know who you are by now, it's over. Oh, I can hear you. Why can't, why is that? Okay. <laughs> I was struggling before. Now, now you're loud. I don't know why, but. No, but it's just, you know, I see it every day. I, I see the, the hypocrisy every day. And I just see the politics and certain things and how certain people don't have to follow the rules, but you have to follow the rules. You know, you just see all the people that hate bullies, but they love bullies. They be around bullies. They support those type of people. And it's just a whole lot of bullshit. It's, it's rhetoric. And I don't like that. I hate feeling like I'm oppressed. You know what I'm saying? I'm be oppressed every day because I have to um, be civil and be cordial with people with multiple different personalities than me. I can adapt, but it's exhausting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's exhausting when you can't be yourself, when you can't be a free spirit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be free spirits. We're supposed to be one with nature and stuff, but everybody has their own mind and this and that, beliefs and perspectives and and I don't knock anybody, you know. I'm I love when you be yourself. Be yourself. It's this the corny shit I disagree with. It's the dick riding that I disagree with and it's the um deflection I don't like. But I respect people who's themselves. Cause I'm myself every damn day. On and off this um, phone and app and laptop, tablet, whatever people using right now to view my show right now. But but I got nothing to hide. I'm a real person. You know, a lot, a lot of people create gimmicks. A lot of people create alter egos. Oh, you're mute. Yeah, you're mute. Am I, am oh. I on mute now? Yeah. Listen, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you, but you heard me, right? Yeah, I heard everything you said. No, but it's just it's so many characters. It's so many um, cartoons out here because people are afraid to be who they are. People are afraid to be themselves, and you you know you get it with the rappers. You know what I'm saying? Young this and young that and this and that, like they are age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, like what you hiding for? Like, you know, well, honestly, you know, like in the entertainment industry, you know, like they don't really like. Well, now it's different, but like you had to be younger to make it, you know. But now, hell, people are people are old now. Well, not old, but like. Entertainment wise, consider oh, you know, like look at everybody calling Nicki Minaj a grandma. She like forty one. You know. Yeah, so. she paved and she paved the way for all these um hoochies right now. <laughs> so she yeah. paved the way, you know. But but that's the thing, like we disrespect our elders, especially yeah. in the music. You oh know? yeah, yeah. Cause shit, you don't hear people like Mandy Moore ever disrespect Dolly Parton or right. Cher, or you don't hear somebody like Clay Aiken talk about Garth Brooks or Justin Timberlake. But you know, but like, look like at that. all of those people you just mentioned. They are vanilla people, so you know, like they don't have that in our like in our community. We don't respect each other. We don't like each other. We're competing. So that's why we have it so much, like, with us. Because, like, like, in the other cultures, they are not doing that. No, but other cultures wants to be us. Oh, yeah, they take our shit. They take everything. They've been doing that. And we be letting them. You know what I'm saying? We, we, should, ha we should have gatekeepers. Not the gatekeepers that they use against each other, but the gatekeeping of 
Every you're not a. Why I keep getting calls. That's why it's muting me. Oh. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that you know what I'm saying we we gatekeeping each other, but we're not gatekeeping our counterparts. No. And it, and and it's not a race thing, but it's a culture thing. Like, how can you talk about you know, for example, Eminem. I, I love Eminem, mm-hmm. but he's but he's not the goat to me. No, it's, I mean, it's m- many people. Yeah, it's, it's many people that came and paved the way. But it's just certain people, you know, say you can't um, use or make a list from your taste of music. I think you know he's in like a certain category. Like he should not be up against like Jay Z or like. You know, like, he shouldn't be up against, like, black rappers because he's not, like, and I mean, like, it's not a color thing, but it's not the same. It's not the same not to me, you know? Like, that's like comparing Britney Spears to Beyonce. You know, like, yeah. you can't do that. But it's just people confuse record sales with, you know, longevity, you know, the impact and this and that. You know, and I don't take away anything because I lived in Detroit. I walked down 8 Mile Road and went to his old house and stuff like that. You know, I actually got the opportunity to see that environment and right. can re- and can relate to that. But he ain't my goat, you know what I'm saying? Because to me, I feel like music was a way for us to get away from our problems and mm-hmm. escape the harsh of our reality. Because, right. you know, they was freestyling, rapping, singing, and this and that. Why they was picking cotton and yeah, yeah, and all this other stuff, because it took away the um the, the trauma, you know what I'm saying, of it and stuff. Right. So, but it's just now it's being weaponized against us to kill each other and destroy each other and pack these prisons and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's black people that's also private investors in these prisons as well. So. This is not just a color thing. It's, it's all a, about money. It's status. Mm-hmm. Because people don't know capitalism. Because once you understand, like, taxes and deeds and this and that, like, how can you say you real, but you, you don't teach us about credit in school. You don't teach us about land, the importance of land, because land is power. Yeah. And... Just for example, like, I don't know if you know, but they gentrifying downtown here. Um, Last time I was in Saginaw, um, what was that, Bancroft Building? Is that what it is? <laughs> Used to be. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is that what you're talking about, that area? Yeah. That, yeah, okay. Like, they were like, doing some i think they had kicked all the old residents out or something because they were redoing it so that's all done now and well of course it's done as i've been gone so long but yeah but they want that town back because that was that was that was their town and then like they moved on the other side when we started moving over there so they want it back now since you know <laughs> it is like because our folks was moving to the township and the, the other the good areas so they moving back over there, getting that shit, and it's cheaper. But I say that to say this. You know how it's a problem to go on somebody's block or somebody's hood, and that person may get killed. Mm-hmm. But when somebody with a bigger checkbook can go in your hood and evict you, and nothing happens. They they let them do it. You know how many of us was killed for wearing a wrong color hat or wrong color shirt right. in the wrong neighborhood. But when a but when a, a rich person can just come to your motherfucking neck of the woods and tell you, hey, I want to open up a mini mall or I want to open up a strip club, and you gotta be out by thirty days. Yeah. Fuck 30 days, I'll give you 10 days to find somewhere to go. That's colonization. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How the fuck you just gonna like, because you don't know what 
sentimental value that I have in my they home for you to kick me out of here. Like I was here first. Mm-hmm. They don't care. And that's what I've been saying to, you know, our people is that we was here first. You know what I'm saying? We're the originals. Right. People, you know, and I really been um, working on like these upcoming episodes because I want people to know about the first invaders, the first colonizers was black people. They weren't white. Mm -hmm. So I've really been working on that because they really flipped the script on us. They really did a whole complete 180 on us. And I just want everybody to just get the truth because I stand for truth, whether if it's coming from a righteous person or coming from Mm -hmm. the wrong messenger. But even a broken clock is right half of the time. But I just want everybody to know, like, you are being manipulated, you're being (laughs) bamboozled, and you damn sure being taken advantage of. Because they love to, because they play with our heart strings. They play with our psychosis, with the things that happened or took place in the past, and they still utilize it. And that's why we can't move forward as a collective because we still stuck in the past. Right. We, we still are fighting um, racism. We still fight in shit, the housing market. We still fight in police brutality. But instead of going to save somebody, we take our phones out and record it. Now, what recording my get my ass beat is going to do for me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And, and nobody cares. They don't care until you become a hashtag. Mhm. But that celebrity who will post, oh, justice for so and so. Let's say if you or me. If it, if we get um killed by a police officer and it's like hashtag justice for William Brown or justice for Dollar Wheel or justice for Nika Reeves, mm-hmm. that same celebrity will walk right past you like you didn't exist or treat you like shit. No, I don't feel like signing an autograph. But people yeah. but people take advantage when you die. Yeah. Because it's trending. Yeah. And it become about them then, not you, for real. No. And then we settle. We so quick to take the fucking money. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. When I I say that we are worth more dead than alive, you know, these slow motherfuckers got mad about it because they were like, oh, how could you say that? Because it's true. Because George Floyd, he died broke. But that settlement money, he got, well, his family and his attorneys got $6.4 million in the settlement. And Sandra Bland's family and attorneys, they settled out of court for $1.7 million. But they didn't have that in their pocket while they was alive. Right. And people don't see the fucked up shit about it. Like, I don't care if you lose. My soul can rest knowing that you fought for me. Mm -hmm. But we so quick to take the money because we so money hungry. We gluttonous. You know what I'm saying? And we don't have shit. You know what I'm saying? We don't have shit. You know what I'm saying? They take everything for us. And I I, I tell everyone, because a lot of those massacres that happened, that was over land. A lot of it was over land, so they conjured up um, rape allegations so they could have an excuse to go kill us. Can I get out of this real quick? Because these kids are going to keep calling me. Hold on. <laughs> Can I... <laughs> okay, I guess she... Um... Let's see. Okay, can you hear me? 
I can't hear you. Okay, just um, just exit out and come back in. <laughs> Hold up. Okay, guys, we're going to bring her back in here. Thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys. But yeah, y'all feel me. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know I'm right. <laughs> so... But yeah, I, I just be being honest, man. I'm so, I'm so sick of people just lying. Shout out to my girl, Joy. Hey, Joy. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, you know, we we can agree with each other and disagree with each other and still love each other. You don't have to agree with everything that I say, but just respect me for saying it because I'm using my voice. I'm using my God-given talent as to express myself. So. Shout out to everybody tuning in. But I think we gonna close this out. <laughs> but yeah, subscribe to the channel. Keep liking the videos, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I really appreciate you guys for supporting me. It's, uh, it's not easy doing what you believe in but it's necessary and I'm out. Hit that like button and again, subscribe to the channel. And I, if you want to leave a donation, you know, I'm not Dr. Umar Johnson. It can be $5, $10, $15, you know what I'm saying? Pay me because I put my all into making sure I give you fire content. So have a good night, be safe, God bless. Peace.